There'll be plenty of surprises when David Letterman comes to CBS, but we can probably expect plenty of appearances by Terry Gard. Now, recently I asked her why she and Dave have this mutual admiration thing. I have great respect for David Letterman because he's, a, he's, a, he's an artist in his own way, and he's a very talented and smart guy. And he works his butt off, you know? He works very hard. Well, you know, some people... Letterman throws people sometimes on the show, but he never, never has thrown you. Not literally, but I mean in a figurative. But he tries to, doesn't he? Yes, he does. I think he does, too. People tell me that. They say, guy, he's so hard on you. I go, well, I didn't notice that. I don't notice it. We just have a conversation. But then it isn't just a conversation, is it? No. It's something else. But, you know, I'll tell you why I admire him, too, is that he really has... Um, guts to stand up for himself because look at this situation I'm not saying anything bad about any particular networks or anything but here NBC had him for so long and they said no no you're not getting this this uh, tonight show spot we're giving it to someone else and we're just gonna leave you right in there and you're trapped as a prisoner in that time slot and he had to have the guts to say um, no, I'm not. I'm going to move on. And I mean, that takes guts. If, uh, you really have to be strong to do that. Not, and then when he did it, they said, well, we're just going to make this really hard on you. You can't take any characters that you created. You can't have anything that you did on our show, anything you did in our building. You can't take with you, and you leave your clothes there, too. I heard that. They, they, you can't take any of his clothes. Well, I mean, that's, you know, so they're being a little bit eighth grade about it all. When you walked out that first time to sit in that guest chair, what was going through your mind, do you remember? Well, I think I was very nervous. Although I had done a show before with him, and uh, not his show, a show when he was on the radio in Indianapolis, and I was promoting, you know, Young Frankenstein, and I drove through there, and I met this guy out in a, you know, in a radio station. And so then when he had did that show, I said, do you remember me, do you remember me? Uh, I was the guy that asked you what kind of car you had? I said, yeah, yeah, I remember. He even sent me the tape of the show that we did. So I thought it would be, I wasn't nervous. I was much more nervous to do The Tonight Show. I thought, well, this no one's going to watch this anyway, so I don't have to be nervous. <laughs> Within 15, how many times have you been on The David Letterman Show? Do you know? 106. 106 I don't know. I'm just making that up. But let's see. The show's been on for 10, 11 years or something, 11 years. And I've been on at least three times a year. So what is that, 33 times? 33 times. <gasps> it's embarrassing. Why do you think you've been on the most? on the show? I think Connie Chung has been on the most. Nah, okay. <laughs> Why do you think you've been on in the top I like Connie. three? Because I'm a nice person. And because a lot of times uh, they would call me up, uh, uh, you know, and say, can you do the show on Thursday? And then I go, well, who died? No, no, no one died. We just like it. They call me on Tuesday. And I'd say, well, what the hell, I'll do it. I don't care. I like, I like to do it. It's fun. It was like an experience, like a Disneyland ride. I'll do that one, sure. Oh. But then so many people told me, don't do this. You're just ruining your career by doing this show too much. And I think, you know, we're all going to be dead someday. Well, they're going to go up in my grave and go, you did let him in too much. You must die. I don't care. I'll do it. You know, was I did it because it was fun and because they asked me. I'm sure they asked a lot of other people who had more scruples than I did. How do you think he's going to do it in an earlier time slot? Oh, I think he'll do very well. He's pretty good at this, at what he does. I really think he's created a whole new uh, life and a whole new art that wasn't there before. It was like Marlon Brando recreated acting in this country. David Letterman recreated a, like a host. There was never anyone like him before or anybody like him since. We, uh, now. Now. So he, he, it's interesting to watch. I'll watch it. It's like watching a train wreck. Not really. No, it's like watching... Uh, something very you've never seen before an alien <laughs> <laughs> believe it or not terry has not been day's most frequent guest that honor goes to sportscaster marv albert and she's coming to cbs as well she's going to be on good advice uh, with shelly long this season is going to play shelly's sister so we get dave on this network we get terry on this network it's the right neck network to park your body in she's a, a lovely oh, she lady she's so funny lovely lady way to go terry Let's see how many weeks it'll take to get her on the show. Maybe the third day? It we'll see. Five minutes before the hour. We'll be right back. Oh. The appearance is on Letterman. I mean, it's, mm -hmm. it's no secret that you're one of Dave's favorite guests. It's a secret to me. Is it a secret yes. to you? Then why the hell does he invite you back 60 or 70 times? Because no one else will do that show in their right minds. Oh, don't tell him I said this. There are some people who won't do it because they're afraid it'll, you know. Really? Yeah, he'll make them feel awful. I always did that show because it's fun to do, and he's just so much fun. For, I mean, for years now, 
years are adding up. I just did that show because they'd call and say, oh, yeah, I love to do that show. I'll do that show. And people say, don't do that show. Don't do that show unless you're going to plug something because you don't want to do this. And I think, well, I don't care. I like it. But now I'm only doing it when I'm plugging um, something that I want to have people have people see. Do you get self-conscious when you're on shows like this or it on is. Letterman's or whatever? Of course I do. More, do you? more you think? Yeah, I do. More you think than the average uh, person does? Uh, than the average performer. I don't the know. The average guy average in Des Moines, people. Iowa doesn't come on a Letterman show. Well, no, I mean, I guess I've become used to it. Maybe too used to it. When I just feel like I'm talking to you. And now, especially on this show, because I think, well, they'll just edit out all these lulls. And so we'll just Wrong. sit here until we figure out what we want to say until we're at the height of our hilarious conversation. And that's what they'll use. And the rest of this stuff, they'll just cut it out. That's what I think. So I'm very <laughs> relaxed. When, when, you, you. When, you walk out, when you walk out on a Letterman show, though, yeah. in front of a live audience, and the thing is live on tape, I mean, the impression would be, here's a woman who's done this so often, and she's such a favorite of Letterman and of his audience, mm -hmm. that she can just glide right through this without a care in the world. True, or, or do you still get the butterflies? You know, it's, it's a very strange thing on that show. I do kind of figure out, oh, I want to talk about stuff, or some kind of jokes, or some kind of notes, and I get them all figured out. And the minute I walk out there, I know David so well that it's like I'm talking to him in the hall. And I said, well, what, what about your hair? What about, and it's like, it becomes a conversation that's just, and I, yeah. oh, somewhere in the back of my mind, I think, there's cameras on and we're on television. <laughs> but it doesn't really register totally that it, that's what we're doing. It's funny. I don't know. I really should prepare an act and go on Letterman Show. But then what for? I don't care. I mean, you know, it's not what I do, really. Yeah. I just like it. I shouldn't do it so much. I think this next gal is swell. She rings the bell. She was in that last Cobola film that didn't do well. Ladies and gentlemen, Miss Terry Gar. Hi. Have a seat, won't you? Very nice of you to come out after that introduction. Nice lyrics. It's Harv Mann, Terry Gar. Hello. Nice to meet you. <laughs> <laughs> you have uh, you have uh, things there on your head. Really? Yeah. Well, you, I mean, you knew that, didn't you? No. No, you have those. Oh, yes, I do. No. Yeah. How are you? Nice to see you again. Nice to see you too. I haven't seen you in a long time. Been a while, hasn't it? Mm -hmm. And now you live. Uh, and now let's get this straight. You're not living in New York. I'm not at liberty to say where I'm living. I'm sorry. What do you, uh, for legal purposes or? Yes. No, really? No, no. I, I, well, yes, as a matter of fact. <laughs> um, did, you, did you wear those on the plane coming out? Yes, I did. As soon as I found out this was going to be a special. No, I bought these right out on the street. Every corner sells these. Uh -huh. You can get little stars or hearts or things. Yeah. Another Why reason to vacation New in New York, isn't it? <laughs> it is. Yeah. They sell these. The guy that invented these said, I got an idea. I'm going to make a million bucks. We're going to put these stars in. Yeah. Wow, How much did you pay for those? I'm not at liberty to say. <laughs> All right, there were three about. dollars. You can get two sets of them for five dollars. Mm -hmm. Any kind of friend. guarantee there? <laughs> no guarantee. Now, uh, <laughs> when you when you're out uh, walking around on the streets, do people uh, recognize you pretty much? I mean, you've been in a lot of uh, big time motion pictures. It would seem so. Yeah. But no, no, I don't. I'm not recognized a lot. I bet you are though, because you're no. on TV. No, I don't. Uh, oh, not, no, it doesn't happen. You don't go out though. You don't go. No, out I the go building. out occasionally. I go out. Sure. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I do go out of the building. You'd have to go out of the building eventually. Do <laughs> you? Yeah. Sooner or later, you got to go out. Now, uh, so uh, do people say anything to you on the streets other than would you like to buy some stars for your head? <laughs> no. They well, they say most people think they know me from someplace, mm -hmm. and they they say, did we go to high school together? I said, I don't think so. I'm an actress. No, no, no. It's not that. I said, yes, yes. I'm an actress. I was in this. I was in that. No, what else were you in? I, I, I end up standing there telling total strangers long lists of credits, and each thing I say was Black Stallion. I go, no, no, it wasn't that. <laughs> I didn't see that. Well, how about this? No, no, it wasn't that. I know we went to high school. Where do you go to the cleaners, they say to me. Mm -hmm. So I guess I'm just one of those... Well, that's nice of you, though, to take the time and talk with them. It is. I have yeah. nothing else to do. Yeah, you may... <laughs> um, 
Uh, now, uh, just let me address myself to the, what uh, Harv was singing earlier. What is that like when you work a long, long time on a mo on a motion picture? What are you doing? I was just looking at this. Is this in, in honor of the festivities? Oh, yes. Part of the special. Fabulous. It is fabulous. The whole show is fabulous, isn't it? Yes. Um, now, you work on a film a long time, and it doesn't do that well. It's not a runaway hit. Yeah. What does that do to you uh, personally, professionally? I don't know. Nothing. I don't... I've never... I, let's see. What a question. You know, when I read that thing in the Rolling Stone where you said uh, tribesmen in remote islands of Borneo or something say, you know, David Letterman's show failed, his morning show, mm -hmm. that's what you feel like. You feel like everyone says this all day long. The Coppola movie, it didn't work, it didn't work. And I, I mean, and I wish I had a penny for every time someone came up to me and said, what happened there? Yeah. Why didn't it work? Yeah. Do I know? I don't know. Yeah. I went there, I did my job, I did the best I could, and I left. Mm -hmm. And I... I I was going to say I took my money, but I didn't even do that. <laughs> but you... Oh, that's right. They, uh... Yeah, well, okay, okay. It's okay. I'm a good sport. <laughs> uh, uh, now, when, but when you go into that, you're, going, you're working for one of the best uh, ever. Yes. And, and your, your, uh, your hopes uh, must be ver just sky high when you start. Yes. At was any point along the way, did you get a hint that maybe it wasn't going to be great? Yes. I, I did, but what am I supposed to say? Hey, this isn't going to work out. I'm leaving. No, I understand. You gotta, you gotta stick there and do your best. No, actually, I didn't. You know, he Francis was on this show shortly after it opened, wasn't he? I didn't get to see that, but you know, he's a, he's a very smart and brilliant man, and he was experimenting. He was doing a lot of uh, highfalutin things that mm -hmm. just. Uh, had no business being done. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Francis, I'm kidding. You know, relax. Uh, but it was, uh, you know, uh, it may go down in history as being one of the great classic cult experimental films or something, huh? Oh, it definitely will. Did you see it? Mm, yeah, I saw it. You don't know. Listen. I didn't see your morning show either, honey. That's it's right. Okay. That's all right. I, uh, no, I, you know, I would have seen it, but it was here so short, and then, um, I, just, I, just I could do a 10-minute version. No, I won't. Oh, no, do that. Now, wait a minute. Let's do this. Let's pause here and take care of this business. When we come back, Terry Gar will do the entire movie in 10 minutes, ladies and gentlemen. 10 seconds. 10 minutes. Welcome back to the show. This, of course, is Terry Gard. Do you want to what? Should I take these off? Well, I don't know. What do you think? I think Oh, yes. that's very nice. Let me see what... You can wear them, and I, I wish you would. Boy, this is, you know, uh, when just looking at it, I thought it was just some kind of cheap, uh, but it's not. It's really <laughs> high-quality, nice stuff here. Uh, that's very nice. Now, you were going to do the 10-second version of One from the Heart? Well, I was. I've never, I've never done that before, but I... Give it a shot. What the hell? Oh, no, I can't now. You can't do it? No, no. Oh. I'm sorry! I don't know. I, I did let me ask you something. Yeah. This this ninety minutes special. How did you actually uh, <laughs> choose the people that were gonna? How did I get picked for this special? Because in our estimation and in the estimation of North Americans, yes. you are special. Oh. Yeah. What about Elizabeth Taylor or somebody like? Uh, that? Elizabeth Taylor wouldn't return our calls. I see. No, we would rather have you any day over... Not that well, Elizabeth Taylor is, of course, always welcome here, but... We Hell would, of a gal. We, you know her personally? No, no. Um, <laughs> now, you're not going to do the 10-second version. No, I, I can't. All right, let me no, ask you another just... question, then. What kind of a person were you in high school? Ah, that's an interesting... You I get don't... good marks? Good marks? Grades? Oh, uh, uh, grades. Let's see. Well, I did, but, I, you know, I picture myself as being, like, a, a rebel without a cause, uh -huh. or maybe even Hell's Angels. Tough! I was tough. Uh -huh. Except that I don't think I really was. I think I just pictured myself that way, and I was really just shy mm -hmm. and scared. And What kind of tough things did you do? Well, I wore leather jackets. You wore a leather jacket? Yeah. yeah. I wore a big cross. Uh -huh. I wore these, these shoes that we had in those days. They were called bunny shoes. You oh, yeah. Never saw you gotta have guts to wear bunny shoes. Yeah. <laughs> they had taps on the bottom of the back of them, so when you walked, they made a noise, and you always slouched, and it was tough. Uh -huh. Now, I read about you in high school. You said now, wait a minute, you were... wait a minute. We're not no, done with oh, you. Oh, gosh. Uh, I remember this now, did you, did, you get, uh, were, did you get arrested and stuff in high school? Oh, no, no, no. I was too scared to do that. And I was also very... Um, uh, studious. I mean, it, I was into my dance. I was a ballet dancer, mm -hmm. and I was in my class every single day, and I was going to auditions for things like that. And I was, I was into another life outside of school, but mm -hmm. in school itself, 
I was tough. Mm -hmm. You liked the facade of being a, a hard guy, huh? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, now, you, you later earned your living as a dancer, didn't you? You were on some fine programs, as I recall. You were on uh, Shindig. Yeah. And... Uh, <laughs> Make a buck. No, was that the one with the you? You weren't the girl with the big eyeglasses, and uh, were you? No, no. Or was that a different show? That was no the same show. That same girl, show. Carol, she uh -huh. does uh, commercials now. Yeah, and and what did you do exactly? What did a shindig dancer? What were the requirements? Oh, something there? like this. You go like this. You go like this. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> and I mean, that's what I studied ballet for ten years for. What do you think I got out? Yeah. That's that was it. Yeah, and you danced uh, in Elvis Presley movies. Mm -hmm. Which ones were you in? I was in, um, the first one I was ever in, of course, this dates me, but, you know, I don't care. How old are you? <laughs> I'm in my early 50s. No, no, no. no. <laughs> I'm guessing you and I are the same age. No. Probably. No, you're probably younger than I am. No, I think the opposite. How old are you? I'm not saying. Don't you know this is show business? You're not supposed to say that. Oh, that, that's, that's trash. Let's put, a, put an end to that. Let's... <laughs> Dave, show business is not trash. No, I don't mean that, but I mean the theory that if you're in show business, you got to lie about your age. That's trash. You do. Bob Fosse told me It's once. 1982. Come clean. No! I won't. I'm, I don't know. It just makes me nervous. And 24. Warm. Oh, yes. That's close. <laughs> <laughs> All right. You well, anyway, I was in this movie. I was in Viva Las Vegas. Oh, That was yeah. the first one. Mm -hmm. And I was in... Um, Kissing Cousins and Roustabout and Clam Bake. These are all Elvis mm -hmm. Preston movies. I was in um, What a Way to Go. That was with Shirley MacLaine. John Goldfarb, please come on. These are big dancing parts. Now, this would be just at the malt shop where, where Elvis would break into song and the dancing yeah, yeah, girls yeah. Would, uh, would appear. Yeah. Yeah, was that fun? Nah. It was a job, you know, and I was checking out, you know, looking at the set and how they did the movies. Uh, and Did you get to meet Elvis Presley? Oh, yeah. Yeah, was he uh, fun, nice? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, mm. d did he know you by name and say, oh, good, here's yes, Carrie again? Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. <laughs> he did. You know why I know that? Because um, I was trying to be an actress right away, mm -hmm. and I started doing commercials. And whenever uh, his boys, these guys that are with him all the time, mm -hmm. would see me on television, he'd see me on television, a commercial goes, well, there's our Terry Gar. Mm -hmm. See, I, I was R. Terry Gar. So he was sort he of, owned of yeah, he was uh, <laughs> paternal. He was taking credit for your success then, no? Yeah, looking out for you. He was a nice guy. You know, yeah. victim, all that stuff. They've written about it, you yeah. know. Uh, now, what are you working on uh, film-wise uh, presently? Presently, I'm working on um, Tootsie, this movie with Dustin. Need I say last names? <laughs> Dustin. An Academy Award winner by the name of Dustin. Uh -huh. Starring in this movie. And the movie, can you tell us what this is about? Oh, it's called Tootsie, and... Um, uh, I play his girlfriend, and we play these aspiring actors in New York, and I audition for a soap opera, and I don't get the part, so he says, I'm going to try for this part, and he dresses up as a woman, and he gets the part. So then he has to go every day and mm -hmm. do this uh, soap opera mm -hmm. as a woman. Mm -hmm. It's very funny, great uh, idea, going to be a big hit. Well, you're very funny and great, and I appreciate you being here on our special, Terry. It was very <laughs> nice you, to David. see you again. Ladies and gentlemen, Terry Gar. We'll... Uh... Back to the show, ladies and gentlemen. Emily Levine will be joining us later. And uh, my first guest tonight has been with us once before, and it's a pleasure to welcome her back again tonight. She is a very talented actress whose screen credits include Close Encounters of the Third Kind, Oh God, One from the Heart, and classics such as my personal favorite, Viva Las Vegas, Clam Bake, <laughs> Clam Bake and Kissin' Cousins. That's Kissin', no G in the word, Kissin' Cousins. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the multi-talented, you know her, you love her, you can't live without her, Terry Gar. Nice to see you. How are you? All of those dogs. Yeah, they're, they're great. They're a lot of fun, and uh, we enjoy them. They always. freeze up though when they get on TV, right? Occasionally, a dog will not perform. I think as uh, you're supposed to. <laughs> I'd like to see a singing dog come out. Did you ever get one of those yet? No, I haven't had what? No. A singing dog that would sing. I talk to the trees. Wouldn't that'd that be, be good. good? Yeah, that'd be good. That would be. Uh, okay. Uh, now. Be now. interesting and clever. It would be. <laughs> 
Well, it would give true meaning to the word juxtaposition. Juxtaposition, yeah. If yeah. you go for that. What is the, the meaning of juxtaposition, as you know it? I have no idea. Well, now, see, you shouldn't really be using <laughs> well, words. Well, doesn't it mean the, the, uh, something like it shows extreme opposite or extreme, uh, I don't know, what is it? <laughs> Gee, I don't know. You, you were the one who brought it up. You, <laughs> you came out here and said that what we have here is an example of juxtaposition. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry I ever brought it up. You were the one that came out with the dogs. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, they came out with their, their own. It's always always nice to see you on the show. That's a great looking dress, by the way. Thank you very much. It's very expensive. Yeah. <laughs> Not very expensive. Well, how all, much was it? It's Let's, all a matter we'll of. Uh, you always ask these personal things. Well, now again, you brought it up. Oh, is it my fault? No, no, it's not. No, 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 here, right? I, no, no. I get what I ask. No, for. heavens, now settle down for okay. goodness. Now, uh, we have to go away for a commercial, but no, no, we're coming back. No, but we do want to know the price of the dress since you brought it up. Okay. But, uh, you mean right now? now you know? Yeah, oh, maybe now we could have it. No, I won't give it to you. All right, we'll have to get rough with her during the commercial. Uh, <laughs> we'll be right back. Terry Darling. So tomorrow night, uh, Monty Python, from Monty Python, Michael Palin will be joining us. Also, limited perspective. This will be good. Uh, I, I know exactly what that is, but, but I can't tell you about it. Uh, it's a little like uh, defining the word juxtaposition. Uh, also tomorrow night, uh, Robert Klein will be here. And uh, as uh, every Thursday night, we'll be answering our viewer mail. Uh, Terry Garr is here this evening. Emily Levine will be joining us. And what do you think about the price of the dress? You're not going to say, or do you want to tell them how much? $80. $80? Yeah. Oh, that's not bad. That's a... It's expensive, isn't it? Eighty bucks for a dress? I don't know. I don't. I wouldn't probably spend eighty bucks on a dress, but no, and you shouldn't. No, it looks good on you. It looks very nice on you. Thank you. Nice dress. Thank you very much. Now, in addition to these uh, movies I mentioned in the beginning, you were also in the the monkeys uh, motion picture Head. <sighs> yep. Did anyone see that? No, I don't think they could have seen it because it only played for a week. But I was in it. Mm -hmm. You know, I was in this acting class at, at the time, and Jack Nicholson was in this acting class. But he had never worked as an actor, and he was a writer. And he wrote all these movies, these independent movies for Roger Corman, and he wrote this movie called Head. So a lot of the kids in the class, we all got to do these one little scenes in that movie. Mm -hmm. And my, the scene I did was I was, uh, I was bitten by a rattlesnake, and I died. Yeah. And I, it was a big part. It was my first... <laughs> I only had one line. What was the line? Do you recall that? Oh, probably something like, ooh. No, no, no. <laughs> uh, it was... I had my finger, the snake bit me on the finger, and they run through, and I say, quick, suck it before the venom reaches my heart. <laughs> That's what I said, and then, then, he, then I die like this, you know? Yeah. Well, mm. <laughs> you asked for it, No, you're David. right, I did. I did. You did? Okay. I did. Did you, now, you grew up there in uh, North Hollywood, wasn't it? Went to North Hollywood High. The, what were they, Bearcats, Tigers, Cougars? Huskies, Huskies. huskies yes. North Hollywood High, who, who, Huskies. Mm -hmm. uh, did you, um, uh, well, that's why you don't know the meaning of the word juxtaposition. No, it's just a joke. What just exactly a joke. are you implying? Uh, it was just a silly joke, and I'm sorry okay. I brought it up. Now, did you always want to be in uh, show business when you were there? Um, I, yes, I did. I, I was a dancer, and I wanted to be a dancer, so I went to dancing school, and I was in ballet companies and stuff like that, and... I want. That's what I wanted. How far to. along in, in ballet dancing did you get? Well, I was in a couple of uh, com ballet companies. I was in a little company in San Francisco, and then I was in some nice companies in L.A. Or David Lachine had a nice little ballet company. But you know, the first job I did was in West Side Story with the original cast. I might be dating myself, but it was the road company, right? And I, I danced uh, real hard in that, but I had one line. And when I saw the reaction I got from one line, how easy it was, I said, "Well, I got to do this now. This is." Uh -huh. gonna be and easier. do you remember that one line? Yes. This, I had a lot of good one-liners. My first line I ever spoke on stage is I said, so I think somebody asked me a question, I don't remember what the question was, but my answer was, no thank you, ooh, oobly -oo. Do you like that? What is, what it's is supposed to be in English, you know? oobly -oo. It's like jazz talk, and we oh. were in the drugstore, and we were being cool, and oh, yeah. it was right, it was in fact, well... Kind of, yeah, the way snotty street kids might talk. Yeah, well, did you see West Side Story? Yeah. It was in a vernacular that was a certain kind of thing. It was a mm -hmm. little slice of history. Yeah. You, al you also had a, uh, uh, you went to a high school where they had a Terry Gar film festival recently, didn't you? Well, oh, I went to my, bro my brother's kids' uh, high school to talk to the drama classes. Well, now, which brother is this? I know you have two. 
<laughs> my brother Ed, my brother Ed, and is he's a um, surgeon. This is Ed the surgeon, yeah. The best surgeon since Jack the Ripper. Well, he has a... <laughs> that's just that's a, joke. a joke. That's a joke at home, isn't it? One of his friends yeah. made up a thing like that. Yeah. It's, a, it's a joke at home, yeah. But he has these two kids, and they, uh, they go to high school, Danny and Lisa. And I went to their high school, and I spoke to the drama class. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and I said, please don't ever try to do this. Yeah. And, and what kind of questions would the drama class ask you? Well, you know, they all want to know, and I don't know why they're asking me, but they all want to know, you know, how do you get to be famous and how do you get to get, get people to ask for your autograph and what's it not like to be recognized and that's what they want to know. What is that like, though? But I don't know. I, do, I don't know. I'm sure it's terrible. Yeah. I mean, those people like, uh, you know, Diane Keaton and Woody Allen are always like this hiding. I'm sure it's terrible. Well, you must get it because you're on TV. Oh, yes, you do. Oh, but see, those people, those people go out so they can be seen doing this. Do you ever, you ever get that feeling? Well, maybe they do. You know, because I, I think that if somebody is a, uh, like I'm no security risk, you know, uh, and but I, but you being an attractive, uh, famous, world-class actress, I can imagine thugs are drooling all over you. <laughs> you know, so you'd have to be, have to be careful. Well, it's not true, and I, I guess I'm not aware of it. Oh, come on. I'm not aware of it. If I started thinking about that, like, somebody spotted me, right? <laughs> I mean, I, I wouldn't be able to think about what I was talking about. I can barely think about what I'm talking about as it is. Yeah. And so if I have to be aware of who recognizes me and who doesn't. And when someone comes up to me and starts asking me, uh, do I know you, are you, how, where do I know you from? Most of them say, you know, did I go to high school with you? Right. And I say, no, 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 I, I'm an actress. Uh, what have you been in? And then oh, I start see. telling a total stranger that uh, I, I've been in this. No, I don't watch TV. I, uh, I was in this movie. No, nah, I didn't go to that movie. I yeah. know I went to high school with you. I said, please leave me alone. I just came to the cleaners. I just want to get my stuff and leave. It's, you know, it's too tough. So I do, I act like I'm nobody and nobody yeah. uh, talks to me. That's hard to believe because you're, <laughs> you're, you're a, a stunning human, you know. Well, so are you, David. No, I'm not. I'm you not, are. You're no. a Muncie, Indiana. Pride and joy. I spent time in Muncie. Yeah. Is that where you're from? Not from, but oh, I went to college there. Oh, something. South Bend? Uh, Indianapolis. Indianapolis. State capitals for 40, Art. Oh. Remember that? <laughs> yes, I do. I know exactly what that's from. Jeopardy? That's Double right. Jeopardy? The bonus thing? My favorite show. My yeah. favorite show. Too bad yeah. it's off. It's gone now, yeah. Uh, tell, me, tell me about uh, your new movie with uh, Dustin Hoffman. Well, it's called Tootsie, and um, I play Dustin's girlfriend, and I... In a nutshell, I audition for this part. We play uh, these off-Broadway actors, and I audition for a soap opera, and he coaches me on the part. And then I don't get the part, but he says, you know, this part, I could do this part, so he dresses up as a woman, and he goes and auditions for it, and then he gets the part. And then it's the comic situations. They're in, they're out of him dressed as a woman, and nobody knows That's about it. That's hard to believe, though, that, that you would be turned down for a part, and then Dustin Hoffman, who I'm thinking is not a real good-looking girl, gets it. Well, it's not about that. It's about he's supposed to be this. Uh, she's supposed to be this strong woman who's the head of a hospital, and there's a scene where he's coaching me to do the part, mm -hmm. and I can't quite cut it because I I always go I have trouble with anger and I have trouble with with being aggressive, and he's thinking I I could do it. I'm a man. You know, it has a lot of uh, food for thought, as they food say. For thought. But it, it's just it's also a comedy. It's very funny. Okay, it's called Tootsie. Yes, December seventeenth. Uh, uh, we we know we're gonna we're gonna go away, but we'll be right back to continue this uh, lively discussion with Terry Gar. He turned out to be what? What did you say? Nothing. He did. He turned out to be. <laughs> Hi, we're back. Uh, Terry Gar is here, and uh, you Tootsie, and uh, boy, this dress is distracting. I'm, I'm telling sorry. you, be careful there. Who? Um, something about the juxtaposition of that. That's uh, uh, now when you do one of these big-time, powerful motion pictures, does everybody get along well, or is there occasionally disagreements? People fight. Like hypothetically, you ever get a star fighting with the director and so forth? Oh. You mean like in Tootsie or something? Did that happen on Tootsie? Well, it, it, well no, it didn't. They just both had uh, their own ideas. And, uh... Oh, hi, Paul. Hi, Paul. Something so, something the matter here? Uh, no, Dave. I, I just wanted to come over and say hello to Terry. Hi, Terry. It's nice to see you. You know, we go back a long way, about five, six years, and, uh... It's true. Yes, and, uh... Can I embarrass you? Can I embarrass this girl just for a moment? I gotta say this. She is a very happening kind of chick, and I mean that sincerely. I really, I really do. This is embarrassing. 
Well, oh, thanks, Paul. Well, and I think that you and the band are just wonderful, too. I really think they're great. Thanks, sir. Yeah, see? Yeah, they're great. They are? Yeah, they're really great. Do you play an instrument, um, Dave? Is that you? Uh, He's made me a little nervous. I'm sorry. Yeah, David. Yeah. No, uh... Sir. No, I, you know, no, I don't... Terry... Play an instrument. I was wondering, Terry, if you would like to just kind of split this scene and kind of, uh, just kind of hang out uh, with us over here in the band area. Why don't you, uh... <coughs> split the scene, huh? Well, I don't know. I, I... I would like to, but I'm doing this thing. I'm, interview I'm being interviewed by Mr. Letterman. Well, I don't think that would be too much of a problem. Dave is a wonderful... You wouldn't mind, would you, Dave? We, uh... Well, um, you know, we were just about finished anyway. <laughs> we were, huh? Yeah, I guess I didn't have anything else to say. I just finished, so... Sure, thanks. Well, great. Thanks, Dave. Okay. Listen, you are going to have some fun. Come over with me now. See this ya. Is a yeah, nice. Uh, uh, we love to do it. I guess I can, uh, I can do this uh, art card piece. This will be just as funny as having Terry Gar on, you know. You know, <clears throat> not anyone can be a guest on our program, and so here's a look at a few, few of the people you won't be seeing on our show. You, you won't be seeing this guy. Uh, he's from Royal Oak, Michigan. Uh, he is in... What is... say a wet uh, whatever blanket don't be wet man. no don't we we gotta go on with the show yeah, maybe go ahead go no. ahead we're just limboing over here right. Jeez. Jeez. there he's there yeah. if he always like this i mean can't we have a little fun in limbo no, he's, 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 he's a really good guy he really is come on in here you gotta get a little thank you thank you very much uh, uh, my uh, my next guest uh, ladies and gentlemen Emily Levine is a very funny writer who has written for several TV shows and has performed on television and in clubs all over the country. Ladies and gentlemen, we're delighted that she is here tonight despite a terrible cold and despite having to follow that. Please welcome a fine stand-up comedian, Emily Levine. Thank you very much. You, you will be appearing where, Emily? I leave tomorrow. I open tomorrow night at Garvin's in Washington through Sunday. Thank you very much for being here tonight. And also my thanks to Terry Garr, the nicely juxtaposed Terry Garr, Paul Schaefer in the band, Mr. Bill Wendell. Tomorrow night, Terry Garr and singer Jimmy Buffett. Have a good night, folks. Thank you very much. Uh, don't even consider going to sleep at this point because you don't want to miss Mr. Fix-It. Now, uh, my next guest has been nominated. Uh, this is very exciting to have this woman here again tonight. She has been nominated for an Academy Award as Best Supporting Actress for her role in the motion picture Tootsie. She is also on the cover of Ms. Magazine and has just finished a new co-starring, uh, finished a new film which she, in which she co-stars with uh, Mr. Michael Keaton called Mr. Mom. We're delighted to have her back again. Please welcome Terry Garr. That's great. So these people are enthused that you're here. Very good. Yeah. And uh, see, they're, they're making that noise. They're doing that. Thing. Congratulations on your success. Thank you. It's uh, well-deserved, and, and I hope you're enjoying it. Yes, I am. Yeah. Is, uh, is your family excited? Your mom must be beside herself. Yes, yes. Yes. <laughs> and have you... When is the big event? When do they do this? A week from Monday? Yeah. Yeah. So uh, far, all it's 
answer is yes and no. And that's all right. That's all right. We'll uh, we'll uh, get up to speed sooner or later. Okay. Uh, now, uh, when you go to this affair, this is a, a global celebration. Uh, do you have something to say? Because as soon as you get out of the car, uh, people are going to start wanting you to say things. That's true. Yeah. Do you have things to say other than you just can't show up and say yeah, no, yeah, no, there. No, you got to. But I can do it now because there's only about eight people watching, right? Because it's real late now. Uh, Terry. <laughs> Terry. Yes. Terry. Yes. You forget that Mr. Fixit has not yet been. Oh, on. that's right. And people are waiting to people see him. People are up. The, the lamp is, the lamp is burning all across America for uh, Mr. Fixit. Now, so what are you going to say? Well, I haven't thought about it now until just now that you've mentioned. It. I suppose you're right. I'll have to have something to say. Yeah, you've thought about it. Well, I, I thought about it. Listen, I have to tell you something. It's embarrassing, but I did think about something. If I were to win, and I, I figure I got one chance in five to get up there, uh, I have to say something. So I started thinking about all the people that I would thank and stuff like that. It's, uh, you feel foolish thinking about this. That's something that you expect that may not happen. And then what am I going to do with all that information if I don't win? Yeah. I store it in my brain. No, no, it's good. It's good, though, to, uh, from time to time, think to yourself who you would like to thank. I mean, just generally. It really is. Yeah, I guess. You know, I, I started thinking about some people that I would like to not thank. <laughs> no, no, you don't. Yeah, I know. You're not supposed to do that. You're supposed to be gracious and everything. But... You... You, oh, ha human. you have a bad attitude about this. A bad attitude? You should be delighted. Right. You don't... I am delighted. I am. Are you? Yeah. Now, have you picked, selected something to wear? Yes, I, I did. <laughs> okay. You know, a lot, of, a lot of people say to me, congratulations on your nomination. What are you going to wear? Yeah. That's almost what everybody says. It's for especially women. That's what they say. What are you going to wear? Mm -hmm. So I don't know. No, you know, <laughs> it's a week away. You know damn well what you're going <laughs> to... You got it. It's probably laid out on your bed at home. No, it's not true. I, I found this dress that I really liked. I almost had a, I had a dream about this dress. I want to wear a dress like a, a 50s sort of punk dress, a, a strapless dress that's just to the knee, sort of tight and taffeta. I was just thinking this about... This is not American Bandstand you're going to. This, this is a big deal. This goes all over the world. Don't show up in the little strapless punk outfit. Don't. <laughs> no? No. Well, it's too late, because I've already ordered this dress, and this is what I'm planning on. Oh, all right. But you well. know, it was uh, probably God intervened or somebody. They didn't want me to wear this dress. And I was telling somebody about it on the phone, how I couldn't find it. And I said, it's this, this designer. Should I say her name? Vicki Teal. Maybe she'll get some business. I don't know. And I hang up the phone, and the guy is it was at work. The guy, the makeup man, sitting across from me says, I know Vicki Teal. I got her home number in Paris. I got her shop number. I got the country home. Her husband is a makeup man for Richard Burton. So I feel like I should. I picked up the phone in Michael Keaton's dressing room, and I dialed direct to Paris. Sorry, David Beagleman, it's on your bill. And I, I got, she picked up the phone. And she said, uh, it was Vicki Teal. I said, well, it's Terry Gar, can you make me this dress? She said, yeah, I'll make it for you, I'll send it to you. But now here's the part we don't know. It's, it's, uh, how's it going to get here on time? It's not here yet. What were you doing in Michael Keaton's dressing room? <laughs> discussing the script, the fine parts <laughs> of the script. Well, to tell you the truth, Michael Keaton, because he is a man, had a phone in his dressing room, and I did not have a phone in my dressing room because I'm just a girl, you know? <laughs> but I don't mind. I'm not bitter. It's not important to me. I'll make my phone calls where I can. Listen, uh, <laughs> uh, you can use our phone. Thank I, you. you know, I'm, I'm excited for you. I've never yeah. really, uh, not that I know you well, but I, I've never really known anybody who's been nominated for an Academy Award. Let me ask you about, the, were you surprised that this movie got this much, generated this much heat? Tootsie. Yeah. Yes, I was. I, can I just ask you something? Did I spit on you when I said Tootsie? Yeah. <laughs> okay. I don't know if you can see it. It's... In the light. I saw it coming out of the light, and there was nothing I could do, so I, I said, okay, I'll try and take it in the tie. And, uh, you see, right there. I think they made a mistake. Okay. I'm not the type of person that should be nominated. I mean, I oh, know no, you, no, I stop it. No, uh, no, you're, you, you are world class. You deserve this nomination, and I, and I hope you win. Well, thank you. I mean, you're, you're part of the American uh, acting industry. I mean... <laughs> You are. Thank you, David. No, you really are. You, you really are. Now, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Uh, let's, do you want to show a piece of the movie? Oh, I don't know. Okay, fine. 
I'd like to talk about some other stuff too, but let's show the movie. Well, it's up to you. If you would rather talk than no, show the movie, no. no. If, go ahead and and uh, and uh, screw Columbia out of this free publicity. No, no, no. Let's see the movie. You want to see the movie? Yeah. Okay. Uh, and tell us about the scene. I, see, I saw the movie and I thought you were terrific in it. And I enjoyed the film. Thank now, you. what are we going to see? Um, I don't know. I, okay. It's the scene where I don't... I think he he gives me this other girl's candy and he says it's for me. Then I read the card and, it, and it's a guy. Yep. And I say, what, are you gay? And it's yep. like that's the scene. Okay, that would be the scene. Mm -hmm. And uh, from the motion picture, the runaway hit of the decade, Tootsie, mm -hmm. starring Ms. Terry Garr, Academy Award nominee. Take a look now, won't you? Very good. Uh, and on the cover of Ms. Magazine, that's you must be thrilled about that also. Mm -hmm. yeah. Now tell tell me what t tell me what you uh, used to do with your dog and your brother. And so forth. No, no, stop it, please, stop it. Now, Terry has something she'd like to say, Terry. Well, when we were watching that clip, we weren't really watching it. I was seeing how I, I really enjoy this man named Bill Wegman. Bill Wegman. Who made a book with his dog in different kinds of outfits and costumes. Man Ray. Man Ray. And he, he's been on the show, yeah. uh, both Man Ray and Bill Wegman. And I was just telling David how I used to dress up my own dog sometimes when I was a kid. And I remember one time I dressed up my dog in my brother's underpants. And I put his tail coming out of the, you know, the... <laughs> boy, oh boy, oh boy. Then I sent him out into the neighborhood to be humiliated. Oh, he's... <laughs> so go on. You didn't... Have a good time. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah, I don't know if dogs like being dressed up. He didn't get any dates for a week no. after oh. that. Yeah. All yeah. right, that's all I wanted to say. You know, go back to your questions. <laughs> <laughs> we, we're out of time. We are? Yeah. Oh, for me? Now it's the fix-it guy, right? <laughs> well, if, if he's still here after that uh, rejoinder, or... Uh, anyway, good luck to you. Okay, and I'm sorry I spit I'll be pulling for you. A week from Monday night. Now, think of something snappy to say when Army Archer jumps on you. You're there. right. I should think about yeah. it now. Yeah. If you think of anything, let no, me... No, no, you're not getting it. Uh, I would know. You'll come up. You'll do fine. Okay. Yeah, nice, and congratulations Thank again, you. Terry. Uh, we'll be right back with Mr. Fix-It. and the band uh, folks and uh, we're uh, happy to have them uh, my my next guest here is uh, it's always a pleasure to welcome her to this program she is a uh, fine actress who was uh, last time she was on the show she was just getting ready to go Some more trouble with Dom DeLuise. Who knows? If... All right. I got him. <laughs> oh, oh. Great. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> you got some... Uh, We're all in here. You got some nasty... <laughs> Not to worry. <laughs> you got some nasty looking... Go on with the show. <laughs> no longer have a wash problem on this show. Please, John. You didn't have to do that, but I'm nope. glad you did. Glad I did. Thank you very much, buddy. They would thank you kindly. Come back and see us anytime. I'm going to get rid of these. All right. Thank All you, right. sir. A job well done. Come on, sir. What a guy, huh? <laughs> what a guy. I don't know much about medicine, but those were some nasty looking bites. I... <laughs> I'd have those looked into. Anyway, as I was saying, it's always a pleasure to welcome my next guest to this program. She uh, is a fine actress and uh, recently, of course, nominated for an Academy Award for her role in the motion picture Tootsie. She is currently co-starring in a film called Mr. Mom. Please welcome Terry Garr. Terry. This is very nice because on this program we have two people that the uh, the audience likes really well. 
you and John, they, you could tell that they like you very much. Thank you for being back. I'm, I'm sorry you didn't win your Academy Award. I didn't win? No, you didn't. But uh, that must have been a very exciting night, huh? It was. It was very exciting. Yeah. Is it fun exciting or, or not fun exciting? Well, it's fun exciting. It all goes by so fast. I mean, I'm just like a, a regular person going there, so... But everybody is, you know, in the end. Even Paul Newman. I mean, you get nominated, you go, yay, I thought I'd be nominated. And then you, th you realize who's going to win. It really, you know. But to, you don't really know, do you? You don't really know, but the closer it gets to the actual ceremony, the more you think you've got a chance. I mean, whether I sure mean, just this blinding reality is not there. And I know, I mean, I thought I was being a fool, but I'm, I'm sure they did that to Paul Newman. I kept thinking of him because he was working on some movie. He was directing a movie, and they didn't think he was probably going to win, but his, his friends talked him into it. He, he got was, a chance. He, was, he, he got was, a chance. He was very good in the verdict, I thought. Oh, yes, he was yeah, great. He was just put your feet down. Don't be sitting like that. Put him, put, him, put him down. Sit down like an adult. All right. Thank you. Now, You're uh, so strict. But I'm sorry you didn't win. I saw you on the telecast. You looked great. You looked Why couldn't I sit that way? Why can't she sit that way? You're so conservative. It's maybe, uh, maybe I'll just bring Dom DeLuise back. Huh? No, no, no. <laughs> sit any way you like. Okay, I'll sit like this. Now, how was the big wedding? The big wedding? Yeah, the big wedding. Tell the folks about the big wedding. You mean the Carrie Fisher, Paul Simon That's wedding? That's right, the big yeah. wedding. It was great, it was great, it was sweet. I'd never been to a, a Jewish wedding before where they break the glass and they do it under the hoopah. I get married, that is. Under the, <laughs> yes. the hoopah? That's what it's called. What is the hoopah? I well, it's some kind yeah. of an arbor of leaves and things mm -hmm. like that. Then there was a, a camera a carefully hidden under there with some um, ivy leaf, leaves over it. I thought that was a nice touch because mm -hmm. this is big time, you know. Paul Simon, Carrie Fisher, and then they had ivy leaves on a little video camera behind the... Uh, it was cute. Uh, they're, they're taping this for a, probably a cable special, right? <laughs> I'm sure. It's worth a lot of money, yeah. Now, who, who are you friends with? Well, I'm friends with both of them, but I'm, I'm really more friends with Carrie, more friendly with Carrie. Mm -hmm. We danced afterwards. We had a great time. We danced the hokey pokey. Now, how long has it been since you've done that? If you ever did. Never did. Never danced. You put your whole did. self in. No, you put your no. whole self out. No. It's a fabulous and freeing dance. No. <laughs> and you no. shake it all about. Yeah. <laughs> it's so stupid. <laughs> Uh, was it a, a big deal? It must have been hundreds of folks there. Well, no, it was about 20 people that came to the actual wedding. And then all the other, all these other people came. And I figured whoever was there was either famous or rich or both or something. I don't know. Who but, I mean, I did know, but I... Who was, uh, now let me uh, embarrass you here by saying who was the most, the biggest person there, aside from Mr. Simon and uh, Ms. Fisher and yourself? I just, you know, I can't estimate those kind of things. No, no, you know. To Who me, is there? we're I mean, all I, I, equal I, people. You, know. <laughs> <laughs> you probably judge people in terms of Here money she goes or again. fame. <laughs> you said I could sit here. You can sit any way you want. Thanks. No. Now, who was the... Now, let me ask you. I'm all, Mick Jagger, was he there? No, he wasn't there. Okay. I don't think he's friends with them so much. Maybe he is. Let's see. Some of my favorites were... Uh, uh, there was a girl named Connie Freiberg. She's a good friend of mine. Does that mean anything to you? <laughs> Connie Freiberg? She's the best. She is the best. She's, She's terrific. She's hysterical. Yeah. Now, who else would you be interested in? I don't know. I thought it was a bigger deal, but 20 people at, a, at the... Oh, no, then lots of people. You know, hundreds of people came later and stuff. But the, the prestige group... The 20 were the ones that got to go to the wedding. Well, you know, it was the family. It was Debbie Reynolds, Nettie Fisher, and um, their grandmothers and all that sort of yeah. stuff. And it was It's fun, though. Yeah. Well, that's good. And Paul's son, uh, Harper, was there. He was great, you know, because he, he uh, Harper? later... Harper, Harper Simon? Yeah, he threw tapioca pudding out the window of the, uh, to the uh, press downstairs. That was one of my <laughs> highlights what, of the... What a nice gesture, <laughs> throwing tapioca to the press. Uh, <laughs> Now, uh, I'm not sure he did that. Don't quote me. But that's not, a, that's not a tradition. That's just something the kid was doing. I'm not sure. It might be a Jewish tradition. <laughs> Throwing tapio the pudding out of the window. You throw it's all new to me. <laughs> throw pudding to the press. It goes back yeah. years and years. The Hebrews used to do it all the time. Mm -hmm. um, now, uh, how about Mr. Mom? That's doing pretty well. Is it? 
I, oh, I yeah. decided that I wouldn't speak about Mr. Mom. It is unspeakable. <laughs> no, that's not true. I haven't seen it yet, so what, what am I going to say? Something fake, you know, I can't... You haven't seen the movie? No, I was there when we filmed it, but I uh, <laughs> think I was. Well, it turned out very nicely. The, you saw it, huh? Yeah, I saw it, and, and I thought you and Michael were terrific in it. Well, Michael Keaton is great. Yeah. But I, um, I understand he was on some talk show where he didn't mention me, so I'm not going to talk about Michael Keaton either. Well, it wasn't this one. It no, wasn't this one. He did was, he, speak had, of me? he had very kind things oh, to good. say about you. Oh, good. Then he's all right. One. Yeah, he's all right. <laughs> uh, we have to go away. And okay. we'll be right back. You want the nurse to come in again? No. Is that all right? Okay. Uh, we'll be right back. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. What 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 fl plane did you fly back from Europe? Uh, Air France. Was it the? Uh... No, I didn't take that. Have you ever taken that one? No. Oh, that's fun. I'm afraid to take that one because take it's it once. against the principles. It's of against the, the principles, but it's it's still fun. Is it's, it? Oh no no, it's not against the principles of aeronautics. It's against the principles of environmental. Uh, oh, is uh, it? Conservation. Yeah. They say that it's burning off ozone and so forth. Great. But I've heard. <laughs> 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 the spray cans in the plane, right? But I, I've heard, you hear conflicting evidence, but it's, uh, the, the SST is a, an experience to take just once. Okay. I keep hearing they're going to discontinue it, but uh, you should give it a shot. Okay, then I will. Yeah, you'd like it. Uh, now, t tell me why you haven't seen Mr. Mom. This is silly. You make, you make, you know, you make a lot of movies. And I was talking to the gentleman in the office today. Uh, for somebody who makes as many movies as you do, you make a lot of really hot films. There are people who make a lot of movies, and half of them are silly and dogs. But you, no, Some no, 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 turkeys no. a lot. No, yeah. no, Black Stallion, Close Encounters of the Third Kind, Mr. Mom, uh, help me out here, Tootsie. One from the heart. One from big. <laughs> Eight people that saw it are here. But it was it was regarded. Uh, how was it regarded? Which critically? Was, no. Was, oh, do you mean one from, one the, from heart? the heart? Yeah. Well, I don't know. There's conflicting reports. Yeah. I try not to read about. Well, it. How did you feel about it? Well, I liked it. I thought it was there a sweet go. little story, and it looked pretty, and, and its time will come, maybe 50, 60 years from now. They'll, they'll dig that up and look at it and say, now there's a nice little movie. Who is that girl? Oh, <laughs> you were in Oh God? Yes, right. it was. See, but, but, I mean, you're, you're making pretty good choices for yourself. Now, why wouldn't you go see Mr. Mom? I, I, uh, I've been out of the country. I've been in Portugal and Paris. You could have seen it before you left. <laughs> I, uh, I couldn't have. They didn't... No, it's not about me. Listen, that movie's about Michael Keaton, is that his name? <laughs> no, it's about, it's their movie, and I know the movie wasn't finished before I left, but I'm sure they would have invited me. <laughs> you should go see it. it okay, was, it's a I nice, will. It was a I'm nice going movie. to go see it. How was Europe? Europe was nice. Uh, we filmed in Portugal and in, in Paris. What part of Portugal? Lisbon. Did you get up to Sintra? Yes, I did get yeah, up to Sintra. I've been to Sintra. Have you? Yes, ma'am. It's a small world. It's a tiny little place. Did you go to the little royal uh, buildings up there? Yeah. That's where the royal family summered, you know. Yes, I knew all about it. Yeah. I heard about okay, it. Okay, now... Uh, <laughs> what you got here? I have the uh, Terry Gar Media Blitz, 1983. This is uh, from a recent... This is from uh, the New York News Sunday section, Terry Gar. Whoa! This is from this month's Esquire magazine, Terry Gar. And Michael Keaton. And Michael Keaton. This is from <laughs> This is from Us magazine. Oh, my favorite magazine. Gar Wars. No, Gar no. Wars. Take a look at the other one down here in the uh, over here, boys. This is You know I took yeah. this picture as a child. That's no joke, Terry. <laughs> and uh, well, I've lost my place and I can't find you in this one. Never mind. Glamour Never mind. magazine. Oh, here you are. Whoa. Oh, my. Oh, my. Yeah. And one more. This month's... By the way, this is your complimentary take-home copy of American Ways, the magazine of American Airlines. Here's Terry Gar. Very nice. Now, how do you feel about all of it? That's some pretty heavy stuff. Pretty good saturation. Well, I think <laughs> I'm a little embarrassed. It's a I think it's stupid. I mean, I don't think it's stupid. I think it's very nice, but 
It just suddenly you put it all in front of me and my hands are sweating. I don't, I've, yeah. I have made, made a mistake. No, no, made no, mistake. no, 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 I'm not no, doing no. this stuff anymore. No, I made the mistake. It was stupid of me to bring this no, up. No, it wasn't. Yeah, it was. No, I you want to know why, why? I don't know. All right, we got to go away. We'll okay. be back. We'll, we'll, we'll come back. It was my fault. I could never have done that. Thank you, folks. We're done here. I, I'm, I'm sorry about this. This was not my idea. They told me to do this. They said it'd be a lot of fun. Did you do everything you, you're told? Well, sorry. <laughs> I do. You're, so you're all right, though? Yes, it's all right. okay. Well, please come back again. I'm sorry. Okay. She's a little embarrassed, so we have to go. Good night. <laughs> It's uh, sinfully luxurious down here. I, I wish each and every one of you could share this moment. What do you think, Paul? Is this all right? It's fabulous. It's like a garden party, you know? It is a little bit. Uh, I was on the train again last night. Everybody I run into asks me to uh, give uh, you their best. They're, you're very well, popular on the train, Paul. Thank you so much. Yeah, and, isn't yeah. it a, and, and how are you doing on the train? Well, it's all right. It was very crowded last night, and... Uh, I was sitting next to one of these guys. Every few miles, every four or five miles, the guy would do this. Nice. That is a nice, yeah. nice move, I think. Yeah, that's, yeah. Uh, that's no good. But it's... Uh... Well... <laughs> so, uh, we're going to have to run him down to the lab. Okay, we have some more... We have uh, more selections. Uh, gee, and you know, I don't feel stupid. Um... We, we may have to have another vote on that, by the way. Okay, uh, tonight, what do you think? We have two wonderful guests, uh, equally fine humans in their own right. <laughs> uh, would you like to see as our first guest tonight the lovely and talented fine actress nominated for an Academy Award, Dr. Ruth Westheim... No, no, no. <laughs> Miss Terry Garr. All right, or our other uh, fine guest tonight uh, has her own radio show here in New York City and uh, other fine cities across the United States and Europe as well, Dr. Ruth Westheimer. All right, what it, is it? Dr. Ruth. Dr. Ruth will be our first guest, folks. Uh, well. <laughs> Well, bless, bless, uh, bless, probably seen the last of Terry. Well, uh, okay, Dr. Ruth will be our first guest. Let me get the uh, information here. Uh, she is the author of uh, Dr. Ruth's Guide to Good Sex and host of her own radio show uh, called Sexually Speaking. She has been uh, recently inducted into the New York Academy of Medicine, and we're delighted that she could be here with us tonight. Please welcome Dr. Ruth Westheimer. We've had that idea for about seven months where we put uh, Larry in the bear suit and turn him loose. And, and I think it was well worth the wait. Yeah, yeah. I think the key phrase there was, what do I do now? <laughs> <laughs> Too bad that hadn't occurred to any one of us prior to tonight's show, but... Although I guess we still could show you these. These are those uh, crazy cards we talked about. This is uh, 
Old man Van Keller owns the local department store and his four boys are spoiled rotten. They can't even have a snowball fight without showing off their oh-so-expensive private armored division. <laughs> what do we do now? <laughs> All right, let's uh, bring out our... Uh, this is a, a wonderful person. Uh, she, we're always happy when she's on this program. A uh, fine actress and a, a lovely uh, person. She is uh, uh, delighted audiences in such films as Tootsie and Mr. Mom and will soon be seen on the Hallmark Hall of Fame's production of Winter of Our Discontent. Please welcome Terry Garr. I'm sorry, I squeezed it a little harder than I should have. I'm awfully sorry. You're a little over-anxious, aren't you, Dave? I'm eager, eager, and I don't want you to be upset. Nice to have you on the show again. It's nice to be back. The Hallmark Hall of Fame. This is a very prestigious uh, thing for you, isn't it? You think so? Oh, sure, that's... <laughs> well, yeah, it is. Yes, it is. Well, uh, I'm impressed. Winner of our discontent? Mm hmm And uh, tell me about that. This is a, a famous play, isn't it? No. <laughs> <laughs> Did you not? go to college or what? Uh, well, I, I went... <laughs> I went to Ball State, so that's... Uh, oh, that's right. Ball U. That's, that's what it's called. Ask Dr. Ruth. Uh, Ball State University, okay. yeah. Okay. Well, uh... The Ball Brothers founded it. <laughs> you know, my mother is not going to ever speak to me again. Why? First, I did a sketch on Saturday Night Live about the contraceptive sponge. Now I'm on this with Dr. Ruth, bless her heart, and looking for the G-spot and all that stuff. Yeah. And now I say that, uh, what I just said. Yeah. Well, anyway... The winter of our discontent is, um, I might as well talk about it since this is, uh, the end of my career. No. no. Okay, all right. Well, what do you mean it's the end of your career? Why do you say that? Well, you know, many people advised me not to do this show. Now, this hurts, <laughs> this, this, this hurts me deeply. Now, who told you, who told you not to be on the show and why? Most professional people that are in the business <laughs> said, <laughs> said for me not to do it that I was spreading myself too thin. Oh, that's silly. Sort of becoming like the whore of Babylon. I'm doing all the shows and stuff. No, no. Now, you were, the last time you were on the show, it's been four months at least. No, no, it hasn't. I was just, it was a month or so. But anyway, I, uh, most people told me not to do it. The only person, my doctor advised me to do the show, so. Uh, <laughs> so I'm Based on what? Why, now, why did you go well, to the doctor? Health. Are you feeling ill? Well, please don't ask. Oh, not feeling well? <laughs> no, I'm feeling fine. All right, look. I, now it's the canopies that's opened up. I might as well spill it. Okay, please I, do. I uh, had these things called lipomas removed from my body. Ooh. <laughs> it's completely stupid to talk about, but that's it. So I, so I went to a doctor to have him look at it. I went to several doctors. It's nothing serious, is it? No, it's nothing serious. And I'm sorry that you brought it up. But when you say, oh, you were, were at the doctor, and let's not talk about it, then it becomes much bigger than it should that, That's right. Yes. So I've done it again. I've screwed this up, haven't I? <laughs> Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but anyway, he thought that I should come on this show, and boy, was he wrong. No, 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 <laughs> come on. No, it, it's I'm right. being mean, aren't I? I? There's no reason for me to be so quite so hostile to you. Well, I get the feeling, the last time especially, that you, you, you don't like being on the show, you don't like me, and... Uh, <laughs> no, is... are you... Woo. Sorry. Uh, <laughs> Just checking. I have some lipomas I'd like you to look at. <laughs> uh, Now, even they're moaning back there, so uh, it's out of control. Uh, but you're not mad at me, are you? Um, no. I guess not. I mean, you only, you only can do what you can do. <laughs> I'm sorry. Let me, let me, uh... Let me now talk about whatever I'm supposed to plug here. Okay, but I, just let me say that I think you're one of my favorite actresses. Really? And, 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 I, and, I, and I love you on uh, this show and anything you do. I thought you were terrific in Mr. Mom. And... Oh, yeah, 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 thanks. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, thanks. I just feel like, boy, I didn't take losing the uh, audience contest that well, to tell you the truth. I think, you know, I come out here and talk about my career and me, 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 and I, I, I. People don't care. They'd rather see sex stuff and G-Spot and Teenage Boys and, you know. I don't blame you. If I was, I'd vote for that, too. 
So, but anyway, I took it a little sort of personally. Anyway. Well, you shouldn't. We're just we're just goofing around, having having fun, trying to have fun. Yeah, I know. We're doing the best we can. I loved uh, Larry Bud and the. Yeah, it was great, wasn't it? Yeah. Now, <laughs> now, Mr. Mom uh, turned out to be the hit of the decade, the runaway hit of I the know. smash hit of the decade. It's so shocking, isn't it? Well, no, it's a uh, you and Michael deserve that, don't you think? It was a nice movie. Did you ever see the movie, by the way? No. Oh, that's right. The last time I was here, last I was time just you were here, out. you had not seen the movie. I saw half of it. <laughs> really? Yeah. And then I fell into a deep sleep. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't awakened for three or four days. Now, do you see Michael much? Do you see a lot of him? Well, actually, on my way here, he sat next to me on the plane. It was just an accident, coincidence, and we, we came together on a plane. Uh-huh. And we oh, never mind. <laughs> anyway, uh, it's that doctor. Oh. No, 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 no. We, we, do you ever fly on the, uh, I'm going to try and get out of this. Did you ever fly on American Airlines? Oh, yeah. It's a yeah, favorite. They, yeah, I've, I've flown them. You know, they did me a, a huge favor last time I was on that airline. I, you probably can't say that, but they did. They did? What'd yeah. they do? Well, I was flying with my dogs, and uh, halfway, we were over Denver, and I was worried that the dogs didn't get on the plane. Mm -hmm. So I contacted the uh, stewardess, and she said, well, let me go up and talk to the captain. And the captain went up, and while he should have been flying the plane, he radios back to New York to inquire about my dogs. I thought that was great. <laughs> That I'm is a, great. A 600,000-pound jetliner, and he's talking about my dogs. I thought that was great. That is great. Yeah, yeah. Okay, well, uh, Carrie, we have to go away for a commercial. What? A commercial, oh, but okay. we'll be right back. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Terry has just written me this note, a novel by John Steinbeck, stupid. Thank you. I stand corrected. I'm sorry about that. <laughs> now, uh, this is the winner of our discontent. Now, tell me, I'm sorry to interrupt you about your airplane story. You and Michael are on this airliner flying. Where are you going? From L.A. to New York. Yeah. He's here doing a top secret job, something Whoa. for the government and Woody Allen. And um, <laughs> I know it's strange. But anyway, um, it. I was going to tell this funny story, and now it seems like it's probably not that funny, but um, they serve, uh, they have, at the end of the, oh, it's so, I can't do this stuff. What's the matter? Well, I mean, I, I think of stuff that I'm going to say, and then when I, I, I'm much better when I don't plan it. People say, you should plan what you're going to say. When I plan what I'm going to say, I feel like, okay, here, I'm going to say a story. Well, it's fine. It's going along just fine. Oh, I can tell. <laughs> it's just going along fine. Well, anyway, they serve ice cream at the end of the dinner on the, for, on the plane, and it always says the ice cream festival. Right. So, Michael and I, <laughs> we're very happy that we were in time for the ice, co ice cream high school. <laughs> you see how I can't do it? We were in time for the ice cream festival, and some of the jokes that we made up about it were, after they have the ice cream festival, they have a conga line through the plane about the ice cream, and the ice cream festival is a result of the great ice cream wars of 1810 that lasted for three days, and now they have this, this festival on American Airlines. <laughs> that's all. There you go. I'm no good at that. No, that's great. Yeah, thank you. I'm encouraged. I'm very encouraged. No, that's good. That's very nice. Yeah. Now, there, you know, I read something uh, about you this afternoon that I thought was sweet and also kind of sad. Your mother is a, uh, has been uh, most of her life a wardrobe mistress, yes. right? She, so she's worked in show business uh, on and on and on. And oh, when yeah. you were a kid, she provided you with clothing, didn't she? <laughs> Sometimes she did, yes. <laughs> she's not speaking to me anymore, though, after tonight. Oh, Mom will get over that, don't I'm you think? not sure. What kind of stuff would uh, she give you to wear? Well, one particular thing that she got me to wear, this was borrowed clothing. She worked, used to work on the Dinah Shore show, and uh, I was going to my high school prom, and I really wanted to wear one of those dresses from Learners like all the other girls were wearing. They were sort of these net dresses, sure. strapless, beautiful yeah, thing. I have one. You, I'm sure you do. But um, she borrowed this Christian Dior dress from Ooh. Dinah Shore's closet. <laughs> Dinah Shore never knew, and I wore it to my prom. Yeah. Now, that's, that's uh, probably, as a kid, exhilarating and in some way not so exhilarating. I was completely, I didn't want that. I wanted, you know, a dress, a jerky dress. Yeah. And especially since I had to give it back. Any other dresses that you wore from other no, folks? No, I'm not so crazy about that story either. <laughs> it's not that thrilling. You know what I would like to know about, uh, you live here in New York? <laughs> well, yeah, Of uh, course you do, because you do the show here. 
Why are they, why are they, um, no, you may not know this across the country, but so in the South Bronx in New York, it's very, um, you know, it looks like Dresden after the bomb. It's just a, a mess. And I've been seeing this thing on the news every night about they're going to the South Bronx and they're putting decals in the windows and flower pots and stuff. No, to make it look like people live there or something. What, do you know anything? Why are they doing well, that? Well, there was a consideration for allocating a sum of money to put up these facades so that people would not be, as you suggested, depressed when they looked at uh, what is not uh, a thriving community now. And, and they, they thought by doing so, now there, there's not a bad reason for it, Amazed. but they thought by doing so that people would say, oh, I see, it's okay and it's being re re renovated and we can invest in this area. Uh, they thought they would be tricked into investing. <laughs> but, but the, but, but the, 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 the problem is, if you're going to take the money just to put up the decals, why don't you take the money to actually fix up the area? Exactly. Yeah, yeah. I wish I could have been at that meeting where someone, you know, like 12 people are sitting around a table and someone suggests, we'll trick them. We'll have a big news conference about how we're going to trick them. Yeah. And, those, and everyone went, yes, good idea, let's go to lunch. No one thought about it. Well, you know, <laughs> it amazes me about life. Well, I don't know if that, has that been rescinded? Is that, has that gone through? They They're are doing, doing it. it. They continue how much to money pour are they money spending? into this. All right, well, uh, we'll be back with uh, Lawrence Spivak here on the Meet the Press in just a minute. We have to go away, Terry. Hi, welcome back. Uh, Terry and I are having uh, the most fun. Now, will you come back and please be on the show? And you're not steamed again, are you? No. Did you? <laughs> Uh, this, of course, is the Academy Award-nominated uh, Terry Garr. Oh, what, what are, you're in a new movie, Kasuna, aren't you? Oh, the winner of our discontent. Yeah, it's on, the t on TV. On the TV. Yeah, this is now... December 6th on some other channel. Uh, and it's a Hallmark Hall of Fame presentation. Mm -hmm. Well, that's nice With of you. With Donald Sutherland. Donald Sutherland. Sutherland. You liked him, didn't you? Yeah, All right. great. Uh, also, thanks to Terry Garr and uh, our own Larry Melman. And we have... Uh, oh, Paul, thank you very much for all your help. And Mr. Bill Wendell, our announcer. Now, we have one more bit of voting. Is that correct? Am I doing this properly? Terry, uh, you may vote along if you like. Why, thank you, David. Uh, instead of running our regular closing credits for the program tonight, this has been a custom-made show, what the audience wants they get. I was watching. Oh, I see. Uh, all right, you have a chance to vote here now. Show, uh, we're going to show the names of each member of our studio audience. We're going to uh, just end the program early and let everybody go home. <laughs> no contest. <laughs> no, it's not a contest. All right, how do we do this? Is everything ready to go for this? Okay, uh, thank you very much. Uh, we'll see you tomorrow night. Uh, who's here tomorrow night? Andrea Martin. Andrea Martin from SCTV and Gaylord Perry. Have a good night, folks. Thank you very much for having us. Okay, the question is probably the uh, most unbelievable crime of all. How did this man, Kip Hogan, pay only $1.98 for over $400,000 worth of fresh vegetables and salad? Well, the police investigation revealed that he would regularly dine at a Wendy's hamburger restaurant and then make several trips to the free salad bar with this device right here. Each time, filling the steamer trunk to capacity. Let me show you how it would work. Just go ahead and turn it on, if you will. Okay. okay. 
hell, it's got a mind of its own. There you are. Gentlemen, don't get anywhere near this thing. It's a little too powerful. <laughs> well, it uh, earlier just sucked everything up for miles around, didn't it? Yeah. Well, I, you know, we could probably get the bugs out of this, bring it back later, couldn't we? Because it was going to be spectacular. <laughs> I'm losing the will to live. Thank you. Thank you very much. But, but by the way, you're welcome to come on down here and pay a visit to the salad bar. If you... uh, we got a good show uh, for you. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, uh, hang on to something because in a moment or two from now, Terry Gar will be out here and uh, we have a wonderful show for you. telling you, uh, when that thing works, the big salad, the sucking device, it's, it's unbelievable, isn't it? It's a, it's a, it, it fills you with kind of an awe when you stand near awesome. it. Awesome. Awesome. And, and uh, we'll try and get it fixed, won't we, Barry? And we'll bring back some uh, salad and some condiments. And so it's not like you're being cheated here. If, if we can fix it before we go off the air, and, and God knows we'll try, you'll get to see it. My first guest tonight, oh, this woman, uh, we, we always like having her here. Uh, she is a terrifically talented actress. She received, of course, uh, an Academy Award nomination for her work in the motion picture Tootsie. And her current project is a film entitled First Born, which is still in production. We're delighted to have her back with us tonight. Please welcome Terry Gar. <laughs> Thank you very much for being here. Well, it's very nice to be here. We always enjoy having you on the show. You're going to do that trick with the hose until it goes right, right? <laughs> you make it sound like it's a burden to the audience. <laughs> well, I don't mean to, but... No, it'll be great. Oh, it's unbelievable. We went through... We, we sucked up two or three heads this afternoon, didn't we, with that thing? So it'll be exciting. <laughs> Yeah, okay. Here, I'll take Sorry? it. I'll take it, unless you want it later. <laughs> Terry, 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 how you doing? I'm doing okay. Now, the last time you were on the show, uh, remember, the audience voted who they wanted to see first, you or Ruth Westheimer? Mm hmm Yeah, and you were, you, uh... You had to bring this up, didn't you? <laughs> well, yeah, I thought you were a, a terribly good sport about it, because the audience selected uh, Ruth to come out first. <laughs> and I thought that that was very nice of you to, you, you played right along. Well, it was, it was fine with me because I, I really don't care whether I'm here or not. <laughs> now you see, I'm coming off mean again. So I can't, and I pretended like I was really upset, and then people really thought that I was. That you were mean about being here last time? I was. I said, so I wasn't chosen first, huh? Yeah. And then I, I went on that tack. Well, you know what else you did now that you brought it up? You, uh, there was this, uh, the play for television you were going to be in, the, uh, the, uh, um, the uh, winter of our discontent? That's right, John oh, yeah. Steinbeck, and I said, uh, is that a play? And you said, of course not, stupid. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, you said, no, it's a, it's a famous novel by John Steinbeck, and then you, you made some fun of where I went to college. <laughs> It's all coming back to me now. <laughs> yeah. Well, I was in an ornery mood, apparently. But you're okay tonight, aren't you? Yes, I am. I've come to prove to the late night world that I am well, an okay person. Well, uh, <laughs> we're, as I mentioned, we're happy to have you here. Now, I know that you have, uh, yesterday, of course, was Super Tuesday, and you have some observations on the, <laughs> on the, uh, on the Democratic campaign so far. 
What was Super Tuesday? Well, they had, they had uh, many, many primaries and important I caucuses know. around. I'm only kidding. No, I just happened to watch the, um, the debate last Sunday. I know you were out of the country. I was out of the country. sunburned. And um, I watched this debate, and I was very frightened for, for us all. <laughs> in, in what regard? Well, first of all, you know, there was a cover of Time magazine that said, that had Mondale and Hart, and it said, okay, the race is on. So these guys were there, and they were, you know, ready to fight. And the two of them sat next to each other and actually did start fighting. And they did those kind of smiles that politicians do when they're really very, very angry. They go, Fritz, Fritz, no, you're wrong. Fritz, hold it just a second. I think you're quite wrong. They're, they're raging, yeah. you know? Yeah. Well, this frightens me because I'm thinking, what happens someday if they have like this, a, a big decision to make involving a nuclear attack or something, and they suddenly become, you know, they're, they're human just like the rest of us. Sure. It made me very, and they got much more involved in, in each other than, um, than in the issues, you know? They didn't talk about them. It's a little, well, we'll see what happens. <laughs> I mean, I guess you can't really say anything about uh, political candidates uh, on the air, can you? I want this guy, and I don't want that guy, and this guy's bad, and that guy's good. I don't want to say that, but... Well, now, what, what I, well, the thing that I don't understand is, is Walter Mondale, first of all, uh, nothing against Walter Mondale, but do we want a president named Walter? <laughs> see? Um, you know, that's, that's your, uh, that's the Dean of Boys at Broad Ripple High School. His name was Walter, you know. How about Fritz? That's somebody's cat. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, but is, is his campaign slogan now, is it, has he adopted it really? Where's the beef? Is that his slogan? <laughs> he said that, you know, it's very interesting. Yeah, it's and like they watching... say it over and over and I over. I know, they tell, that's all, all the news that he made this joke about where's the beef. Yeah, yeah. I don't know, it means he watches commercials, and that's, that makes me uh, secure in my country. <laughs> my president would be watching commercials. So, I like him, though, you know? Yeah. So otherwise, you're doing okay, aren't you? Yes, I am. Now, how's your, how's your uh, personal life? Is it all right? <laughs> Terry, I say... <laughs> your personal life, is it all right? Yes, my personal life is fine. But you know... I, I really don't think I'm going to talk about it anymore because anymore. Who asks? Who cares? Um, well, no, I just asked. I know you did, and and all all kinds of people do. But you know, I saw this publicity about Lillian Gish lately, and she's about 70, 80, something like that. Once you get up there, it's all the same, isn't it? <laughs> Wait until we get there, of course. Then it'll be very important. Anyway, she's an older woman <laughs> and an actress. And she gets out there, and she, I even saw her in Johnny Carson, and I've read interviews with her. She talks about making films, about acting on the stage, about her career, about people she's worked with. And in all the things, I have never heard how many times she's been married, who she, who she lived with, what kind of, I mean, she's just like a craftsman that did her work, talks about her work, does it, and leaves. I mean, I'm sure there's a price you have to pay for that. You don't get to be on the cover of People magazine, because you don't wash your dirty clothes in public, as my mm -hmm. mother used to say. But I don't want to. I just decided it's not very nice, is it? I mean, it would be better if I talked about... <laughs> I don't know. I'm going here. I, I don't know. Don't know. <laughs> well, then, I'm very sorry. <laughs> then let's talk about it. I just don't want to make you unhappy. No. <laughs> Do you uh, name a movie Lillian Gish was in? Intolerance. In was she? Birth of a Nation. Birth of a Nation, right. <laughs> um, just before the buzzer, too. Yeah, that, like I say, it's the price she paid. We don't know what movie she's in because we didn't know who she was married to. Well, if we had known, maybe then I would remember the movie. I don't know. She was married to Bill Cullen for a while. She was? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. And then uh, Dick Godier for a couple of years. We have to uh, we have to go away. We have to go away, but we'll be right back. We'll be right back.
Hi, we're back uh, with uh, Terry Gar. Later on the program, Steve Miserak, Marilyn Sokol is here, and uh, we'll get the uh, the big salad uh, sucking device hooked up, and so it'll give you a chance to wake the kids and get some coffee down them before we uh, turn that on. So how was your <laughs> how was your uh, deal in uh, Europe? You went over there and you did a film for HBO. How did that turn out? What was it, that called? It was fabulous. It was called To Catch a King. Yeah. Luckily, well, it's over with now. They show it a couple times and then it's gone. Mm -hmm. But it may come back to haunt me, like a lot of things. Were well, you not happy with how it turned out? Well, it doesn't really make any sense. I had a good time. I got to go to Portugal, and mm -hmm. I shouldn't really say it. But it was a sort of a serious drama, mystery, racing thing about uh, it took place with the Nazis and stuff. And the Washington Post said it should have been retitled Lucy Ricardo meets the Gestapo. <laughs> or, oops, a Nazi. I... <laughs> so it didn't turn out like you had hoped, huh? Not exactly. This was you and Robert Wagner? Mm -hmm. Oh, was he a nice guy? A gem of yeah. a person. Yeah. Very, very nice. You know, in L.A. they have these things, uh, not to change subject, you have that big hose. In L.A. they have these blower machines. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> um, That's not exactly what I meant. <laughs> now it's going to get worse. Wait. No, it'll be all right. In L.A., they have these big uh, machines that these gardeners strap on their back, and they have hoses, and they, they blow the leaves around because we don't have enough rain or water to actually... Auto yeah. I don't know how you... So this guy, Phil Garner, decided to get two guys together in a room and have a contest with them but that they they blow each other uh, around the room <laughs> it's kind of a good idea maybe you could do it with the salad if is this it, other joke doesn't work out is it uh, just so sort of sport for the wealthy is that what it is? i'm not sure yeah we we the age of technology has gone so far oh, ahead that we are now resorted it, to squirting each other with air well see now ours ours doesn't blow it it inhales a device inhales mm -hmm. Now, t tell me about singing. You sang in this uh, picture, didn't you? This HBO deal? Sort of. I did sing, yes. I, I told them that I could sing when I took the job. And then we went into record... Have you ever tried to sing in a recording oh, session? Yeah. Yeah. I thought that I was doing so well. And I'm singing. I, I got a right to sing the blues. And they said, would you like to come in the booth and hear one? I said, sure, I'll come in the booth and hear one. <gasps> they played it. It was so shocking. Mm -hmm. It was so bad. that I did about 12 takes, and they took like one or two words from each take to paste together this yeah. little song that... You want to try it tonight? Yeah. <laughs> you got go? Yeah. Yeah. Sure. And after that, I'll eat some broken glass. <laughs> Terry, now, uh, we, we, we're, we're running late here. We have to go to a commercial, okay. but uh, I do want to invite you to stay. If you want to hang around to see the demonstration of the salad machine, you're more than welcome. I have an appointment, or I'd stay. Mm. Oh. <laughs> okay. uh, Terry, nice to see you again. Nice to see you. Was I nice? Oh, you were nicer. terrific. No, you were fine. Oh, I thought oh, it went pretty well. Oh. Thank you very much. <laughs> Terry Gar, ladies and gentlemen. We'll be right back with a uh, visit to the Toy Fair here in the U.S. Perks, that's right, Perks. Tomorrow night on this program, comedian Rich Hall will be here and we answer our voluminous viewer mail later on in this program tonight. Steve Miserak will be here, a billiards champion, uh, and he's going to play billiards for us. Now, Terry is still here. We, do we have the stuff? Yeah. Bring, bring in the, the device and some salad and... Yeah. Do you want to do it? You don't want to do it? You, don't have, you can just watch if you want. What was the problem? Do we know what was the matter with the uh, big... Machine? Had, a, had a blockage. I, I think we all know how <laughs> painful that can be. Now, all right. Uh, Terry, why don't you just do it? If I were you, I'd start here and work your way to the tomatoes. The tomatoes are unbelievable when those suckers go. <laughs> and then finish up with some croutons. All right? Are you sure a serious actress would, would Lillian Gish do the... Whoa, be careful! <laughs> okay, now wait a minute. It's crimped here. We gotta... Let me turn it around. Okay, now start with the, the head lettuce here. <laughs> oh, man! Whoa! Get 
some more tomatoes. That's yeah. Oh. Exciting. Very nice. Yeah, that's very nice. Thank you, Terry. Thank is, you, David. Is, could be uh, could be fun at parties. This thing. Terry, thank, <laughs> thank you very much. Terry Gar, ladies and gentlemen. Terry Gar. Let me see. See that was. Stay right there. I see that was. That would have been spectacular, right? That was that was just amazing. Thank you very much. Now we want to do this. You're certainly welcome to stay right there, though. Oh, I'm supposed to leave. No, you're not. You can stay right there. <laughs> no, no. See, a oh professional can handle it, so she doesn't call attention to the mistake. Oh, no. No, no. You don't have to leave. No, it was not a mistake. We're going to do this now, and then uh, you don't have to leave at all. As a matter of fact, you know, once a year. Toy manufacturers and toy buyers from around the country meet here in New York City to display the latest lines of playthings for children. Some are educational, some are just loud and dangerous. Well, they were all there, and tonight we're going to take a visit to the New York City Toy Fair. Okay, Michelle, uh, what is this deal here, this thing? All right, this is our Ferris wheel. Welcome back to the program, and my thanks to uh, Tom Wright. Was it Tom Wright? Thank you, Tom, very much for your help. And I'm awfully sorry. We had actually uh, anticipated, uh, we knew for a fact we were going to talk to this man, and uh, the phone is still ringing, so if we ever get through to him down there, we'll at least uh, say hello to him and thank him. But uh, no cigar for Gustavo this time. Uh, Paul, how are you? You all right? Swinging tonight. Dave. Having a nice summer? Are you having a good summer? I'm having, yeah, kind of a wildwood summer, I would say. Now, it's what does that mean exactly? When... What, what exactly does that mean? Well, it's like this. Uh, baby, you be mine. Because it's twisting time. That's the kind of a thing. Wildwood days. Uh, you know? Okay, Paul's yeah. having a wildwood summer. Well, <sighs> my first guest tonight. This woman is a talented actress. She was recently, well, not recently, a year ago, she was nominated for an Academy Award for her work in the film Tootsie, and her latest film is Firstborn, which will be released when? Soon. Please welcome back Terry Garr. You look great. That's a beautiful dress. That's a very summery dress, isn't it? Thank you. You look very comfortable. Are you having a nice summer? Yeah, I'm having a pretty nice summer. What are you doing? Summer. Well, I went um, river rafting and backpacking recently. Really? Yes, I did. Where, now, where? It wasn't even on your notes, was it? No. Yeah, in Yosemite, or Yosemite. <laughs> <laughs> well, what is it? <laughs> or my Yosemite. Uh -huh. <laughs> um, what did you say? No, no, uh, no. I was going to ask you where, and you told me where. Yeah. Now, have you ever done that before? Never. Was it fun? Yeah, it was great. Well, I mean, I camped when I was a kid. It was mm -hmm. a good feeling. Yeah. Did you, did you do a lot of hiking, or just, you know, walk from the car to the snack shop and back? No. A lot of hiking. Yeah. Like a lot How of far hiking. did you hike? A couple of miles up into the hills. To what elevation? Five, well, I can't remember. Where's Vernal? Do you know where this place called Vernal Falls is? It's out there in the wilderness. It, it makes you be at one with... Uh, uh -huh. Nature. Yeah. And uh, did you learn anything about yourself while you were out there? No. <laughs> now tell me about Nothing the raft. I didn't already know. <laughs> tell me about the raft trip. That was wonderful. Was it dangerous? Did no, you feel like no, you... no, no. Because the river is very low and it's summer, and yeah. you just get in this raft and you float down. You let it take you. Yeah. There is something to be said. I for think that, that's yes. great. Now I would not have guessed that you would do that kind of activity in your free time. No, I'd probably be taking, like, makeup and hair lessons or something, right? <laughs> no, no, it's, no, I didn't, I didn't mean that, but, uh, like, I talked to you before, and I said, why don't you take a vacation? And you said, oh, I don't, I don't need to take a vacation. I, I travel all the time when I work. So I thought, oh, well. That's... You said, why don't you travel? But I travel all the time when I work. Yeah, I do. I go, and then it's work, you know, mm -hmm. Mexico City, Paris, you know, it's just work. <laughs> 
Uh, was so, this the first vacation you've taken in a while? Yes. Yeah. Well, well, that's exciting. Now, how did you make the choice to go do that? Did, did a friend of yours say, let's go do this, or did you say, by gosh, that's what I'm going to do? I, I wanted to go to this place, the Awani Hotel. I hear it's beautiful. It's very beautiful, and yeah. so I got, I got my foot in the door there. Yeah. Well, that's good. Now, see, you surprised me. I would not have guessed that. So what are you doing in New York now? Well, I'm doing a movie for Martin Scorsese. Mm -hmm. That's very is, is this the, the one that's uh, uh, firstborn? No, no, that was another one I did. Yeah. Well, I'm doing three in a row. I'm doing a lot. Yeah. This one I'm, pl I'm doing, uh, I'm playing a cocktail waitress that's sort of freeze-dried in the 60s. And I have my hair in a beehive, and I wear go-go boots and stuff like that. It's kind yeah. of my look. Yeah. I like it. Mm -hmm. And then at, at, at one point, a bee actually flies out of my hair, <laughs> <laughs> out of my beehive. <laughs> Well, that's cute. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, what, what, is the, uh, what is the movie about? I'm not sure. <laughs> well, it's about the perils of New York. It's, it all takes place in one night, and it's this guy that just can't get home. You know how it is in New York. You, you don't know? You just can't get home? Well, I'm... sometimes, you know, things happen. You can walk down the street, and a lot of things <laughs> just happen, and you can't believe it. At the end of a day, like, six incredible things have happened. Yeah. So they're putting it all into a movie, and people yeah. still won't believe it, I bet. Okay. But it's very funny. Now, what, what about Firstborn? What's that about? Oh, I don't know. Well, it's, it's a very... It's a very serious... I play a, a mother, for a change, of two kids. But <laughs> How many times have you been a mother well, in films? I've lost count. Now, let's count them up. Mr. Mom, <laughs> okay. you were a mother. Yeah. Uh, Close Encounters, you were a mother. Yeah. Uh, Black Stallion. Black Stallion, you were a mother. Mm -hmm. What about Oh God? Were you, yeah, it was. You were a mother yeah. in that? So how many of that? Is that That's four, four mothers? Four, four? Yeah. What about uh, 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 Star Wars? You, you weren't in that, were you? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure. At least a half a dozen. Yeah. Well, you... <laughs> And maybe, maybe one day you'll be a mother. You're not a mother, right? I hope so. Yeah, you look forward to that? Yes, yeah, I Well, I, I hope so, too. We, uh, we, look, I won this guy's uh, sunglasses. I don't know if you know it. Well, those are nice. Those are nice. Slip yeah, those on. We've, uh, Can I conduct the rest of the interview with Yeah, this? if you like, sure. Will people take me seriously? <laughs> it's a good look. Very I like serious. that. Yeah. we got to do a commercial, uh, but then we'll be back, and we have plenty more time to talk about all kinds of wonderful things. Okay. We'll be right back with Terry Gale. Though. No, no, I slept in a cabin. Cabin. Mm -hmm. Would you consider it in a tent? Yes, I would consider why, it. Is why this, are you asking me? I thought I, mean, I, I thought I had just posed that question. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Why would? Uh, why did? What was the? Why did you make the decision that t a cabin, not the tent? Well, a cabin's a little more comfortable. It had a bed and sheets, and it was so it wasn't really like camping. Yeah. yeah. Well, no, I think that's still very nice that you got to do that. Well, thank you. Uh, now, what do you what do you know about uh, what do you think of the Miss America deal? See, a murmur. Yeah, you know, it's caused a lot of a controversy, but I, I definitely have some viewpoints, some opinions. All right. Because, you see, what I think it did was um, it pointed up this thing about the Miss America contest, and everybody seems to be missing the point. That, to me, Penthouse Magazine and the Miss America pageant are, are almost the same thing. You know, it's like... <laughs> You know, we are Americans, and we like our um, exploitation of women um, in a very wholesome way. We like, the, we don't like it with their clothes off. We like it with their clothes on. We like to judge them in bathing. I mean, it's, it's BS, David. Mm. I know it's late night TV, but it's the height of hypocrisy. I mean, I'm sure this, this woman, and I, I, I can't, I feel sorry for her, but I also defend her in a way because I think women are really never taught how to compete so we don't you know if you you're sort of subliminally taught when you're little you either become mrs somebody or if you want to go out there in the world you got you got to try a lot of stuff because it's real hard for a woman mm -hmm. men are said to go play football and basketball and there's rules and you compete in this war and this territory but women are taught to go oh where'd you get your shoes i mean it's not it's, they're not taught how to compete so the, this girl you know she's a victim all right so it's not very good but well, no, I see. I, I generally agree with you, and oh, I think cool. probably one day the, the Miss America pageant will be conducted in the nude. The whole thing. <laughs> it's my... Yes! Why not? Why not be absolutely honest? 
embarrassed about it and do it that way. And right after that, they no, should no, have a pageant minute. about uh, German shepherds and which one looks the best. I mean, that's what it's about. Have you have you seen the photos in question? I haven't, no. Oh, my. Well. <laughs> but now, see, that's the thing that really annoys me, because that... The winner in all this is Penthouse Magazine. Everyone's going to buy that magazine because yeah. they all want to see yeah. the pictures. Yeah. And that's really makes me angry because they, now they get more money. Have you, uh, have you ever posed nude for anything? Wouldn't that be something? <laughs> well, uh, I've never posed nude. I have, the, I have a feeling you have. <laughs> no, I mean, I, um, I admit I was nude in some films. Which, now, which ones were those? Are we going to drag them out now? Mr. Mom, <laughs> the Black Stallion. But I think it's different to be in, in a film. <laughs> No, 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 which films did you appear in nude in? Uh, I believe I, I had a nude scene in One from the Heart. One from the Heart. And there was this other movie years and years ago. Oh, well, this is the one we want to jot no. down. No, no. <laughs> what, uh, what was that one? Well, I think it was called The Moonshine War or something. Moonshine Wars, I don't remember. Well, that, it's, but... no, it was a stupid movie. And is as a matter cassette, of fact, you know? my, the nude scene... The nude scene that I was in was cut. Okay. It sizzled holes in the cutting oh, cool. room floor. Now, how did you feel about that? Because, of course, that's just the same sort of exploitation that you're uh, uh, condemning the Miss America well, pageant that's... for uh, pandering to. No, it is not. It oh, is not. Because... Absolutely. They, they get, uh, they get a, a dolly in the film, and they say, you know, it'd be really nice uh, if you could take your clothes off here, and, th and they're going to sell more tickets. It's the same reason that they sold more magazines. No, I don't think so. I think it's a different context. I really think it's a, 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 thank you. I think it's exploiting it's, women. It's cheap it was, applause. You can't say thank you when you get a little. No, I, I can't. Because I think it's little by little, the inroads we make, and maybe a few people will, the wheels will turn and they will say, yeah, people should be treated equally. And okay, no, these no. people are exposing women and they, I mean, exploiting them. Right, but okay, but you don't feel exploited having undressed on film. But now, would you undress for a Penthouse or another magazine? No. Now, what's the difference? Because in those magazines, uh, they just, they think that women's bodies are to be photo when they're young and stuff, but as soon as you get a wrinkle or old, you know, you throw them out the window, these women, and get new ones. And what if they're still alive, you know? <laughs> and then you still have some thoughts and some feelings. Well, you're no good anymore. What we're seeing in these magazines is, you know, this is what we're, they're, it's purely for, uh, you know, men to look at. And then they, they have those, um interviews with the girls and they're all so stupid you know my favorite singer is Barry Manilow I mean they don't have anything about it. It so... <laughs> they make that up now wait a minute you, you think the women make that up or the magazine makes it up? I think the up? magazine makes it up so that they are not offensive and they are not threatening in any way they are women with bodies and no minds well let's, let's don't tell Barry Manilow he... <laughs> No, no offense, Barry. I, I, I met him. Well, that's interesting. I don't see. I think you're wrong about the difference between film and magazines. I think it's the same deal. Well, what about then? Uh, no, I don't, because I think one is art. What about Michelangelo no. painting those angels with no clothes on? Mo that's... Wait a minute. Moonshine Wars was art. Yeah, well, I'll tell you what it was about. This was a movie, and Richard Widmark was in it, and it was also, by the way, in the 60s. And in the 60s, everyone was very confused. I mean, this is where I sort of side with this woman, Vanessa, because you get confused. And so, in the 60s, everybody was doing these nude scenes. I mean, everybody was doing nude scenes, and now, of course, they're all sorry. But I got one part in this movie, it was about... It was about uh, moonshining liquor in the 30s. And there was a scene in a restaurant where this man comes in and, and robs everybody. And then the, just before he leaves, he says, and you, take off your dress. <laughs> yeah, well, that is art. Now I see what you're saying. <laughs> see, if you'd explained that to me earlier, now I understand. All right, now we have to do the station identification. All right? Now you're, you're not steamed again, are you? Uh, we'll be right back, folks. Tomorrow on this program, uh, Glenn Fry, who used to be with what group, Terry? The Eagles. Premier, America's premier rock and roll band. From California. That's right. Glenn Fry will be here. Also, comedian Stephen Wright. And uh, as we do every Thursday, we answer our uh, viewer mail. Later in this program, Jim Carrey will be here. And uh, do-it-yourself demo with who, Terry? Johnny Blackwell. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> 
He, he used to be with the Eagles, too. Did he? Yeah, it's a little known fact. Hmm. I thought he was with the Frogs. <laughs> no, no. Now, uh, I was surprised to learn this afternoon that you attended uh, an, an event here in New York City that we've covered about four, three or four times. Small world, isn't it? Mm -hmm. We both were interested in this. Yeah, the Inventors Exposition. Mm -hmm. Now, why did you go down there? Because I like to see what people think up and stuff like that. And also, my favorite aunt when I was a kid just to invent things. Yeah, what did she invent? Well, she invented a lot of things. She invented um, onion glasses. Yeah. You know, when you slice onions, they were like goggles with um, terry cloth around them. So that you put them on, it looked like you were racing through your kitchen mm -hmm. and chopping up onions. So you wouldn't cry from the yeah. onions? Yeah. Now, do you know why you cry when you slice onions? Because it's very sad. <laughs> 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 no. no. Why, David? I don't know. You don't know? No. Because of the fumes from the onions. Well, I know that, but I mean, what, what, what is the chemical makeup of the fumes that activates the tear ducts? Who cares? <laughs> <laughs> I think it's a much better concept to say... See, now, I'm afraid to talk like this because it's going to negate everything I said before. I think it's a much better concept to say that maybe that onion was something else in another life. And that when you slice it up, it's like comes back at you and yeah. Yeah. makes you cry. Okay, so what else did... Uh, what, what, is, what was your aunt's name? Or well, what is her name? Her name was Grace. She's up in the... Oh, uh, inventing upstairs yes, now. Yes, she I think. is. Uh, and what else did she invent? She invented a, 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 a chair to take to the beach. Mm -hmm. She called it... <laughs> Wait a minute. <laughs> People have been taking chairs to the beach for hundreds... Well, she invented it. <laughs> Really? The two chair you take to the beach. What now? Is there something special about it? Well, yes. You could uh, make it sit up or lay down. You could put drinks on the side. You can carry umbrellas. You can put the umbrella up. You can put the umbrella oh, down. Oh, kind of like a multi-purpose Yes, beach but chair. the best part about it was that she named it the Silly Saps Seaside Sunseat. Oh. <laughs> That's not really the best part. No, but, but it's all right. We had a great time thinking yeah. of that name. Did, did it uh, sell? Did she sell any of these glasses well, or no, chairs? Well, no, she never got any of these inventions to, as far as the patent office. No. But you know why? No. Because she was a woman and she was scared. Well, that's, that's, you're probably we go, we right. We go back to the same theme. You're, you're probably to... right. You're probably right. Uh, no, that's not good, is it? Oh. She could have done it. She tried. Is that, excuse me just a second. We have the Cuban on the phone? Yes. All oh. Right. Uh, so what should we do? Should we ask Terry to stay here or ask Terry to... Uh, I have to go to rehearsal. You have to leave. No, but I'll stay. I'll, I don't know what about Oh, we'll do a commercial, and then we'll figure all of this out, and it shouldn't be a burden to you folks at home anyway. <laughs> we'll be right back. Okay.